So, I got a new 3D printer. But there's one problem. Multi-material prints create a lot of waste and that waste gets pooped out the back of the printer where I don't exactly have enough space for a garbage can. So I need a way to get the waste from the poop chute in the back to the front of the 3D printer where the garbage can is. Okay, here's the idea. So here's my machine. That's the 3D printer. Here's the AMS. Here's the poop chute in the back. What if I could create a way to make the poop go on a conveyor belt. It goes like this. And here's my little, the desk that it's on. Into a trash can, like this. Now, I don't really intend to make this automatic. What if I could just have it go there, right? That's the idea. So to start off the build, I created this piece to make sure the bearings could fit, as well as the motor shafts and the inner diameter of the bearing. Uh, you can see that there's like flattened sides of the motor. Uh, I wanted to make sure that, that would fit perfectly. So here you can see I managed to get the bearing to fit on the first try. Uh, yes, it actually was the first try, but this motor shaft was a little bit tight. The inner diameter was completely wrong so I needed to increase it here I'm just showing that it was like uh, 0.6 millimeters off so I adjusted that and, and then ended up reprinting it so here's the reprinted part uh, you can see it fits way better now I also noticed um, when I was designing it and taking the measurements again that I actually had the height wrong so here that's what I'm showing and uh, I adjusted the height so that it actually is flush with the bearing. So here was my first attempt at the pulleys that were gonna pull the belt. And I wanted to make sure I could create this part before actually making the belt. And I realized I could use it to actually form the shape of the belt. And here I was just making sure that the motor shaft would actually fit through it. And that like, it wouldn't break when I turned it so it seemed pretty good had a good fit so I tested here the outer diameter of that shaft too just to make sure it would fit through the bearing which you know the chances were pretty good because <laughs> I already created the uh, template here the little tester piece so that actually helped big time I highly recommend doing that whenever starting new builds before actually creating the big part you know do a little test piece that tends to help so that's exactly what I did here. Uh, before creating like an entire belt, I wanted to make sure that the teeth were gonna fit. So here I was just testing that fit and making sure it was good. Um, I actually made a bunch of these, not just this one. It was probably like five, six tries before I got it right. So that's why I'm saying print small parts first to just to test with and get the fit right and then do the big one. So this is the TPU I decided to use. It's just some like random off-brand TPU that I found. Um, it's really flexible, much more flexible than most. I think it was like sure 85 or 90 at most. But this is what I decided to use for the belt itself. And here is the belt getting started to print. Um, <laughs> the print was set for like 15 hours, so it was like 15 or 16 hours. So it took a long, long time. Um, 
but I kept checking on it and seeing that it was good and like you can see here it looked pretty good so once it finished printing you can see how big it is based on the size of my hand and the mouse next to it it came out pretty good overall it looked really good the bamboo lab x1 carbon is extremely good at printing tpu i never have any problems um i was surprised to get these little like dangly bits coming off the end but they just ripped off um so here i was putting it on the pulley connected to the bearing to see how it would go around it because i wasn't sure if it was gonna act like a regular belt um so you can see it like holds its form a little bit more than I'd want it to because I printed it as a circle. So these are the new improved pulleys once I had a design set. Um, I printed it with a crap ton of supports and even extra support at the bottom just to make sure that it was going to come out good. And it did. Look at that quality. Tremendous. So here I'm just removing the support. There was a lot of it on it and it was kind of tough to get out. Especially these bits. So I just had to use my tool. A little grippy pliers. And these little stringy bits are not even too bad to take off. And this was just like a surrounding shell covering it so that the inner flanges would come out okay. So here's with all the supports off and it just came out beautiful. Those things weren't even a big deal, but it came out really good. Here I was just testing um, how it would feel in like the distance that it would be um, once it was fully stretched out because here I was still in the design phase of trying to figure out how far does the does the uh, scaffolding of the conveyor need to be like the outer rim so I used that as a guide to just get a ballpark of it here I was just shaving the little corners down creating like a little chamfer just to see how well they would fit into uh, the bearings because it, it was a little bit um, it had a little bit of an elephant's foot on each side so that just needed to be cut off a little bit once I did that it fit pretty good but this first one that I made fit a little too good I think I ended up breaking one of those shafts a couple times I had to reprint these like two or three times Um, I mean, but that's what happens when you create a 3D printed shaft. It's not necessarily the best thing to do. So this was the first attempt at creating the outer frame of the conveyor, as well as the little feet on the sides. So as always on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, the final print it comes out extremely good. Now here I was just putting it all together just to get a test fit and then I realized I made a pretty big mistake here so in the design process I just completely forgot so here I was just testing the fit again and just making sure I got it right which I didn't uh, so here I reprinted the same parts with the adjustments I needed to make from the previous fitting um, I also reprinted the redesigned feet to get them to fit so here you can see they fit pretty good they were a little bit on the loose side so i had to do it again so here you can see just how far off i was and that's probably like 30 40 centimeters off so i had to readjust that and that's what i did here i made the corrections finally fixed that bearing holder part and this time I was more confident about the, the fitting. So here you can see the bearings fit in nice and snug, really nice. And I finally added that little flanged part in the back 
to stop it from moving. So here I was just doing a little test fit and it fit perfectly here. But I ended up switching my plan. I was planning on using that outside part, but I ended up using that outside part as the outside. So finally, another test fit. And because this was the most important part, I had to do it a million times, but I finally got it right after this one. It's a little tricky because it was supposed to be tight, but I was pretty confident once I saw that, that this would be good. So on to the next part. This little red piece here was gonna be the motor holder. And here it is, a close up. Now this one took a few tries. I think it ended up taking about eight tries to do that. But I finally got it in, not in this clip, <laughs> but it took a bunch of tries for me to get this right. I wanted it to fit in perfectly. And in the end it did. So this is what the final <laughs> version of that piece came out to be. And here it fit perfectly. Um, this is actually an older clip of when I actually got the fit right. And there's enough space that I can actually hold it as well as go through, the shaft goes through and goes straight into the pulley. So here's all the parts laid out for assembly. This was the first attempt at assembly. Got the screws in, I held the sides on, did that on both sides. I reprinted the uh, feet and TPU actually. I designed some little inner um, bearing holders and belt strain relief, I guess you can call it. Those little wheels, those smaller wheels on the sides. And I put some siding on the motor holder as well as a cover so that I can make it a little cleaner and fully hold it. That's it right there and I'm just using self-tapping uh, screws. I believe they're M3 screws. Those are really nice for working with 3D prints. Um, but on these I put uh, embedded nuts into the walls and then put regular M3 socket head screws. So that was really satisfying. <laughs> to have the nuts embedded perfectly like that. Once I figured out the right measurement for that, um, it was pretty easy to just add them anywhere I needed it. And then I put the wheels in. Um, but to also test the belt, I realized I had to take it off. I actually ended up breaking those wheels, <laughs> which I had to redo. Um, I later on designed this little circuit holder and I managed to fit it all kind of vertically. So it's like all mounted on the wall, kind of. And then this is the little buck converter. Um, that's just to convert 12 volts from the wall to a variable amount that I could control with the potentiometer. At least that was the idea. I also had a little holder for the barrel connector as well as a switch that will be a little toggle switch to turn it on and off the whole thing. Um, this was just putting it all together and doing a little test fit. Later on, I did all the wiring. But this is where it'll be mounted. Now, so the power is gonna go from a barrel connector in and that's gonna be 12 volts from the wall adapter that I'm gonna show in a second. That goes in the input of the buck converter and then that'll go into the output of the buck converter into a potentiometer which will go into the motor. And in between the barrel connector and the buck converter is a switch that can turn the power on and off. And this is the wall adapter I was talking about. It's just a little 12 volt adapter and I spared you all the wiring here because it was a bunch of soldering that I had to do here I was just making the little connector figured I'd show you this part um, I just make my own connectors these days and this was gonna be like an easy way for me to connect this to the 
wire of the motor without having to just directly solder it in. Because this way I could remove the motor if I needed to, if I needed to take out and fix the um, this little like, electronics board thing, I could just remove the connector and not have to deal with that wire being soldered directly to it. So my super glue actually shut itself. <laughs> so I had to like force it open with some tools, but I super glued the barrel connector to the little plastic hole here. And then I hot glued the um, potentiometer just so that it had a little bit more strain relief because those soldered wires tend to come off. And since that would be connected to the motor, um, there's a chance that I'd pull it off from trying to plug the motor in, so I didn't want to risk that, so I just hot glued it. All right, so putting the wheels back on and getting the electronics plate mounted, here are the screws that I'll be using. And like I said before, I just have embedded nuts in there and I just screw it directly in. So fat fingered it there and <laughs> put it the wrong way, but this actually fit really nicely and I liked the red and white color scheme I ended up having. All right, and here's that wire I was talking about before. Um, see, this just made it easier to just mount it separately and then plug it in. And then all I had to do was just aim it here and then just solder it in. So this wasn't too bad. Just needed to hold the wire without burning my finger. <laughs> so I just ended up using pliers to do that. So doing the final assembly, the final fit. Took a little while to get here, but we did it. At this point, I knew everything fit. It was just a matter of putting it together. That was that broken piece that I was talking about earlier. I ended up having to reprint that pulley, but it wasn't too much of a big deal. Fit nicely, put it in. Had to make sure the little wheels inside fit too. There you go, just a little snap snap and there we go now it's just a matter of putting the feet on alrighty get the final feet here and they're made of TPU and we're done now it's just a matter of testing plug in our barrel jack connector turn it on and then turn our potentiometer on. And there we go. 3D printed conveyor belt with the TPU belt. But you can see how fast it goes and my potentiometer didn't actually variably control it in the end. So I couldn't really use it. So instead, I printed out this. Thanks for watching.